Professor Kevin Curran is a professor of cybersecurity with the Ulster University. Kevin, good afternoon to you. Can Kevin just make a little caveat to John's thing there? When authoritative voices like yourself, Professor O'Neill, uh, and others are based in Derry, that, that, that you know, the, the kickback for the city and the region for projects like this is potentially massive. Yeah, it is indeed, um, especially with the demographic of the students that we would expect here who are graduates really and are more likely to put down roots again. So the economy can only benefit from. But again, I'm biased, yeah. I have to say. Well, OK. Kevin, uh, yeah. Facebook, I, how do you monitor Facebook? I they, mean, we find it hard enough to monitor our own Facebook 24-7, never mind the billions of accounts. Of course you can't, because every hour there are 3 million links shared, 60 million friends requests, and 9 million messages sent every hour. Wow. But when it comes to it, fake news has major ramifications. In India alone, we've seen that these WhatsApp messages about child adopters um, have led to 40 deaths, wrongful deaths in each case. So again, when misinformation again is, is shared, it really does affect society. So something has to be done. So even though you could never place all the links and the stories which are shared and verify the sources, but if you can identify and talk about Facebook, if Facebook can identify the major stories which are being shared and of course the ones which are in the dangerous categories again like dangerous cancer cures, false news spread in the wake of terror attacks or fake content about voting in elections. If we can identify those type of stories again. So therefore in the United States since the end of 2016 Facebook have employed third party fact checkers. Now and they've done it in 14 countries where they work with local language news organizations. So now for the first time in the UK they have brought on board the established charity called Full Fact. So Full Fact, again, review the contents which are flagged by users and will go off and do their due diligence on the stories and come back with a rating on that story. Yes, but how many millions of employees have they? Well, not that many, but again... <laughs> You know, they've got at least they have some and we're seeing a start to this again. Hopefully they will add more. Hopefully full fact will add more fact checkers, but they will be able to ra rank stories in true or false or a mixture. Independent third party fact checkers. Why doesn't Facebook do this themselves? They're the publisher. They're the platform. There's a part of that, but also again, in some ways they can't really win at times, even in the United States with the, the news organization, the third parties that they've used, people have seen them as partisan. And also there's a strange phenomenon which occurs that if something is labeled through a system of this fact checking, sometimes that can lead to the post being actually exploding because people take up arms against it as if there was a partisan move against what they were sharing, as if the right or the left were against them. Uh -huh. So it has this strange phenomenon. In other words, people will um, will just see it as they're in, they're in a struggle then because that they are being censored. They're saying now pretty much every election on the planet uh, is uh, potentially affected by f the fake stuff. I mean, I distinctly remember the last American election reading all the stuff about Hillary Clinton and Trump, for that matter, on, on social media. Kevin, uh, is it fixable at all? No, there is, there, no, you could never fix it, but you have to have steps like this in the right direction. There is, you know, we, we, we can look, we, we can identify fake sites which are set up, which are just there to, to send fake news. So we can identify that, we can do that with algorithms actually. Yeah. We can do issues like that. We can prevent some of the larger segment stories again, the more dangerous ones that we spot. But, but we have, we cannot sit, the companies cannot stick back because because our news, our media, we, we've moved to a new place now where, where we're getting information from social media. And again, and, and there's been so many trends done. If you're over 65, you're much more likely to share fake news. Again, so people don't always have scientific training to know what truth is. And some people just believe everything they say. They think, well, well, why would that be a lie? But we know so much of it is false. So we have to have some ways, we have to have the, the standards of truth, like the Guardian we've had in New York Times again. But because we move online, in 15 minutes, you can create a news site that looks like the New York Times, it looks like the Guardian. And of course, then as a society, as a global society, we would lose, you know, <laughs> any factual basis of what is truth. So, so we have to do something. Right. So say it was you doing that and you have the brains probably to do a Guardian front page that looks like a Guardian front page and you publish that and say, you know, something horrible yeah. or something yeah. defamatory or fake. Yeah. Why, why is it so difficult for Facebook to look at that and go, clearly that's it. Zap, you're out. Because that's only one of the thousand sites me and my pals would have done that day. Do you see? You do thousands a day? Well, just think about it. Yeah. 
Of course you would. We'd, we'd have software generating those templates and we'd register domains because we're getting paid by someone else. But, you know, for, for whatever reason we're doing this fake news, there's always a reason. There's always money getting paid. Wow. I'm either doing it for elections or I'm doing it. Yeah, I'm doing it for elections generally somewhere. I'm doing it to promote uh, fake cancer pills. So therefore, I would be creating thousands of sites. Registering domains, it's just a matter of changing a few words to get around how, the AI. How can Facebook not sieve stuff at source? Well, well they, do, they do. But again, when you say a thousand, like in other words, they, you know, they will eventually pick up on that and I have to change my tactics I would have to go maybe and register different IP addresses using different change completely the name of the ca fake cancer drug I'm doing in other words and other people so it's a cat and mouse all the time wow so again you're never going to remove it because there's money to be made there's money to be made selling stuff there's money to be made by winning you know there's power so, to be had by winning the elections so <laughs> Somebody with your intelligence would do that most believably and you would have all the things done editorially. So how do I know when I click in here, Yeah, there you go, Google, BBC, how do I know that that's today's BBC News site? Oh, oh, well, the, the padlock, www.bbc, the padlock would be there in the top left. So you, you know it's been a There's cryptic. a padlock, yeah. Yeah, and you're right. Don't tell me, you could but put I have a to padlock know, on that. No, 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 I couldn't put a padlock that has bbc.co.uk, but what I could do is BBC, BBC foil, which there is no .co.uk, uk, and have it all looking like the BBC. And someone who comes along and clicks and it doesn't really look at the pad. No one really looks at the address bar anymore. And unfortunately, Chrome, the browser, the leading browser, has removed it. So generally, you don't really see the URL. But I in other words, I would put up something that looks like the BBC as a URL. But again, but I also have to know previously that the BBC are an authoritative, you know, independent, trusted news organization again. So, but our coming up, our generation, which is growing up now, yeah. how do they know that the Guardian and the, and the, you know, all these are established and they generally aim for the truth? Gotcha. So that's the problem. The young people today, how will they know what is a standard bearer for truth? That's kind of depressing, Kevin, but I know too much to end this, uh, this fine Friday. Professor Kevin Curran there. Uh, Professor of Cybersecurity in the Ulster uh, University. Make of that what you will.